she runs. She runs, Mills. Where are we going? <laughs> I was about to start for a time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No idea what it is. You found treasure on a pirate ship. <gasps> Hello! Today is electric day. Yep. <laughs> so we've got all of our solar panels, all of our charge controllers, our multi plus, our battery chargers. So we're gonna see if we can get it charging the batteries today, aren't we? That's our that's our main goal. So, yeah, we're going to try and get our big batteries charging off the charge controller. Amelia's keeping an eye to see how all our chickens, all the chickens at home. chickens at home. <laughs> and the big mama is moving. So she's moving. Lot. Yeah. So we've, we've had two baby chickens hatch. I'm not sure if the viewers at home are really bothered about your chickens, Gemma, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm so excited about my chickens. I'm more so, concerned about the boat. So we need to go and we need to bring the solar panels and the charge controllers, all that sort of stuff from the van. But we haven't got any water today at all. So we're going to have to use the sledge. So it's manpower today. But the only thing we haven't got, we're not strong enough to bring over, is the two big batteries. Yeah, they're like... They're, each, each battery weighs, what, 65 kilograms? I think it's, yeah, yeah, about six, 68 kilos each, which you can only just lift it onto a bench. Yeah, so, so we're not jumping gullies, gullies yeah, with yeah, batteries. Yeah. So we're going to have to wait until next week because um, we are due some high water next week. Yes. But we have got a big marine battery downstairs, haven't we? We've got, we've got four big, the big start batteries, so yeah. So we're going to wire into them for now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Until... We can float our batteries over next week. So at the moment, poor Simon is um, trying to bring everything over in the mud. <laughs> Bless him. So we've got the trusty old sledge out again, um, with all the heavy electric stuff on. Amelia doesn't want to be on a boat on her own because she thinks it's um, haunted, so I can't get off and leave her. So he's, he's having a little struggle, I think. Where is he? There he is. Good job he's strong, isn't it? Crack. <laughs> hey, the villagers look quite dry today. They're always dry, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they always dry after no rain. But we've not had much rain since no. the last time we were here. Yeah. Would you believe, just off this little area, there's a full box of basically rotted chipboards. So I think that must have been like a bench or something. It was just everywhere. So, that one's done. Tidied. Get rid of this box. It's a bit tidier now for putting the elect. Oh, I missed a bit. Look where the box was. I mean, Hoover's just fell in the bilge. <laughs> Jobs are good and that'll do for now. So in the workshop we made this panel basically just so we know it all hooks on and works. It's actually marine plywood, painted it or primed it. You know. use marine plywood? Only because we have our off cuts, ah. right? So we know we know this is the, the actual size of the Victron. The Victron comes up to here. So we now need to make some supports. You see in this, some supports on the wall. Okay, so plan is 
plan is we're going to put some supports from down here, up here, past here. Hopefully we can tie into something here. So maybe Joe will find the knife and we'll just take a take a slot out of that. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, back in a minute. Hello. Are we good? Huge boat. I'm awake in of your little cramped space. Beautiful. Are we level? Yeah, we're shipwrecks. <laughs> How many Ugga Duggers is that? Ugga Dugger. Two Ugga Dugger. One Ugga Dugger. I'm going to push this point that way. Um, I'm going to push it. Oh, where was it? The mark was on the very outside. Ah, uh, yeah, Pre-drill the board or no? Just going for it. I'm just gonna make angry noises. Angry noises? Don't yeah. make angry noises. <laughs> angry. Oh, these are stainless, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Non-magnetic. So, so we've got some bolts sticking out the back there. Oh, okay. So we have to go high. Is that going to work? No, because your machine's going to well, This is actually movable. Yes, there. there. What do you reckon? Yeah. Somebody had the Weetabix this morning. Well, I'm sorry, knackered them. <laughs> I've had to carry this across the mud without getting wet. It's not quite as simple as it sounds. <laughs> Oh yes. It's only good when you make a pre pre-made bracket. So I made this, obviously it's full of mud because it's been dragged across the mud. <laughs> um, this fits our Victron AGM batteries, but that was intended to go there. Well it'd go there, wouldn't it? It'll go there for now until we get some longer cables on it. So, for now, we'll have to, let me see it, mount the battery isolator, I'm sure see me on. on. Ba battery isolator like that, because we haven't got any hole saws at the moment, so I'm going to use this to mount, mount up the fuses and stuff like that. So, I've got the main fuse, just going to go on the battery there, I'm now putting the um, battery voltage monitor, BMV. What's it called? Battery something. Yeah, battery monitor. So I've literally just been looking for them for ages. I've just found them now. Okay, so we now need to link the ground because everything goes through the BMV because that that measures how much current you're drawing. So we have the panel mounted. So I've mounted the battery voltage monitor. So very temporary at the moment, the battery isolator is on there like so, because I haven't got a hole saw. So and I was gonna mount it on it, but I'm gonna paint this first anyway before we um, drill it. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be my takeoff of the batteries. Got the the shunt for the BMV. 
So we now need to connect up the the main DC ground wire to here and then we need to bring it around, connect it to the negative terminal on these batteries at the moment. These batteries are just, just temporary, these are actually the star batteries. So on the Easy Solar, the battery temperature sensor, which is this one here, goes on the negative terminal of the battery, correct Jim? Yeah. According to the instructions, so it goes on the negative and it goes into one here, which says T-Sense. T-Sense. And it gives you the polarity. And pause. So then from the the BMV Got it right, BMV We now plug into the back of the colour control unit So we go into the V direct That's in there Well, when you buy one of these and you buy the shunt, it doesn't actually come with the cable. But luckily, Amazon is quite good. We've got one. Okay, so this wants to go to the negative side. So this just monitors temperature on the battery on the negative terminal. Just basically make sure we're not overcharging it or something. I think. So, got cable there. We don't need another cable. Any more instructions you need me to read? Not yet until we actually juice up in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. It seems quite simple. It is simple. It's good. That's why I like this. It's just all in one. Yeah, and it's like. It's like you think for the amount of kit in there and stuff like that, that there'd be like, like millions of wires. There is inside, but it's pretty done by Vectron. Power for the shunt goes to the, the live side of this, but obviously it's on the isolator, so it. It, it, it'll isolate when we turn the isolator off. So I'm literally now, can we see this? I'm going to turn it off for the first time. Ready? Oh yeah. No fizz pops. A couple of little pops here and there. A little few relays clicking in and out. Tied up while it's um, powering on. Okay, so we can now go through. There's on the battery. Okay, so the so we go to the battery monitor, the MultiPlus. Smart solar, not making any power yet because we haven't got any panels connected to it. So the actual battery power is low at the moment, which is probably to be expected. So the multiplus is inverting. Um, so the battery voltage monitor. So at the moment we're drawing 1.2 amps. Um, state of charge said 100%. I need to figure out how to actually set all this. So, but awesome, awesome, awesome piece of kit. And on the home screen, it'll tell tells all about how much the solar's charging. AC loads. We haven't got any AC connected up. Likewise, um, probably it's inverting, and the battery reckons is at 100%. But it's not. We need to calibrate that. Um, I'm not clear what that is, but something every time maybe. Yeah. So we've got a. Big fuse there, so I can take off some more 24 volt supplies via 
Got a diesel fuse, we've got a 30 amp and a 50 amp. So the, the shunt for the BMV is there. So the this is asking us to calibrate now basically. We're not gonna do that just yet. Um, we've got a big isolator. I'm gonna put some protective sheathing around all this. Uh, this is our mid midpoint of the batteries. I would ID them with like different colour tapes and stuff. We've got a battery temperature sensor. Which is quite interesting. So let's see if we can actually um, there you go. Battery temperature 8.5 degrees. That's good, it works. Got the white hole. So yeah, let's connect up some, let's connect up some AC. This is all the inside, so our AC input is here. I'm just going to get the front panel, wherever I've put it. There it is. That's where we keep it, eh? So yeah, AC input. Some different AC outs, another AC out. I know... I need to read in the book, but I know... Some of these only work when we've got generator power on. But we'll figure all the setup later. In fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, it's this one here. It's this output here. It's probably that one, yeah. So it's this one here, it will only work with the Genion or ground power. Floppy <laughs> disk man's here! <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we've installed the uh, the Draytech that I kindly donated um, using three as a as a service provider and we've just moved the positions obviously we don't want to upset the kids downstairs um, running some tests across the boat and we're getting 30 meg up and down off a 3G 4C uh, 4G SIM card so uh, so yeah bonus happy days yeah. Netflix is a go say hello to the sister. <laughs> I'm here to make the tea. Yeah, so you go and our floppy disk man, James. <laughs> cool. So we're gonna fit the solar panels. It hasn't been windy all day and the second you come to the roof it's windy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and clear off this area so we can fit the solar panels temporarily because they will be moved and reallocated. So, we're going to put it there, Simon will probably go, shouldn't have put it there. But it's going there, because he's all nice and warm in the engine room and we're not. So, it's only temporary. So, we'll just stay in the school, aren't magnetic. So what I'm going to do, Kirst, I'm literally, I'm just going to throw a blob through. Ooh, what was that noise? James. Always do it, don't I? Always go. One of my hand. Right, active input. Right. Active. Right, making that noise again. Can you hear that noise, Joe? Yeah. James can't hear it. I can. Right, can you. I'll oh, bump somewhere. So we. Oh. It just keeps saying how you see disconnected. And I can't keep changing stuff in there, but it shouldn't be like. This light keeps flashing, this mains on, mains on flashes, and it says mains input disconnect. Okay, can you, can you do some research or something? So I'm starting to wire the um, 12 volt side of things that we're doing. And as usual, we haven't got the right crimps and stuff, so. 
see if these little ones work. Yeah. Oh, that tape's still kicking. Not that Figure one. it out. Well, yeah, I'm just going to have to use these little red ones because we've got no blue ones. Yeah, it's only a colour, isn't it? It's only a colour. Have you ever crimped anything, Kirst? No. Do you want to go? Yeah. Let's crimp. There you go. Teach your sister-in-law some electrics. You have to come down. Are you making me look small because you're on a plank? <laughs> <laughs> right, so the way Simon does it, Simon puts it on and then crimps it, but I always find they always fall out. So what I do, so you've got red, so you put it in the red. So I'll just tighten it off there because then it holds it for me. Okay. And then you stick your wire, so... All that, and then you stick your wire into the hole, and then squeeze. Go on, hold on. You have to squeeze gently because you knock it out. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Right, go. Big muscles. Go on, all the way. Is it gone? No. All the way, go on. There we go. That's it, and then release. There you go. There we go. That's crimped on. Fantastic. Electrics with Gemma. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should say don't try this at home, like you know, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> right, do you want to go and should we do some fusing? Yeah. Did you find a screwy? Yeah. Which right? Which one are we going? Right. With? So you put on a red. Whoa. <laughs> you just broke the electrics. <laughs> <laughs> it really probably wasn't you. It was probably the boys. <laughs> we hope. Did you just blow the electrics? <laughs> There we go, see we didn't touch any... Oh my god. What's he doing? Hold know. on, hold on, look. I'm gonna go a special light now. Oh no, it's gonna light on my face. Ah! <laughs> okay. So we're gonna connect this... <laughs> there goes the wires on the stairs. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna unscrew that. Yeah. And connect the live to that side. Right. And then... I'll tell you what, we'll put it that side because it'll make it easier. So... No, just put it in the face. It doesn't matter. And then we're going to put the negative to that side. Do you know, I'm so excited. Someone on our Amazon wish list has bought us a set of screwdrivers. <laughs> I can't wait because it's the only, like, well, we're always looking for everything, mm. but never find the right screwdriver. Right, don't lose your screw because you'll no. have to put that back in. Let's put it there. Ta da! It works! Amazing! <laughs> oh dear. Not yet, but maybe later. <laughs> 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 Are you winning? No. So we've had a few issues. Big issues. Big issues with the electrics. So we realised on our journey we've got a faulty plug. Yeah. So we're having trouble with the AC side of things. But we don't really need AC at the moment for this week, yeah. do we? So we're, we're pushing through. Yeah, so we're concentrating on the DC side to keep the Wi Fi and the security system and stuff going. Simon's just now fitting the battery to battery charger, which converts the 24 volt down to 12 volt, so we can have the 12 volt system going on the, uh, on the boat. Yes, at least part of it. Part of it. Simon's not having fun today. Oh, he's not happy. <laughs> no. He's not happy. He's got spaghetti junctions going on everywhere. It's not being fun. And you know what's not fun? Working in this like little tiny corner of the boat. It's just the knowledge. <laughs> and the lack of knowledge. Well, We're winning. We're getting there. The main issue today has been it's been showing 240 volts here, but it's it's not been working. But it turns out it was actually just a bad connection. But bad connection. Can't remember what I was going to say now. We've just got to come out and like. <laughs> yeah. So we now need a, a just a 12 volt battery or just another battery that we can then. Supply the Wi Fi with. And smiles. Smiles! Can you see how forced these smiles are today? It hasn't been the greatest of days with these electrics, has it? Oh, it's just been, um, been challenging. I think our main issue was, was cables. 
to when you think you've got some good cable and you're in the middle of nowhere and it's like you're relying on it and no it's been it's been letting us down <coughs> so guess who's coming back tomorrow to fix the electrics morning today is sunday um back at the boats it's actually a very nice day Looking over there, but the sun's coming out. So we had issues yesterday with cable. When you think you've got some good cable on the boat, which was already on the boat, you should probably presume it's bad. So I say today's Sunday, went to the workshop, got a new roll of cable. It's only 1.5 at the moment, but it'll be fine for now. Uh, I think ideally it should be 2.5. Cool, so we're going to try and install some new cables and hopefully we can get the gen uh, the, the Victron doing power sharing, power assist, so not power sharing, power assist, which after we researched last night in the bath, it should be very simple. So now we have replaced the blue cable with the white one. We are now working properly. How dare it fail me. So we've got the Jenny now charging the batteries. So yesterday this light here was on and then off and then on and then off but we were getting 240 volts up here. So you can hear the generator revving up now because I've got the current limit. Can we see that? So we've got the current limit set at 15 amps input so we're now charging the batteries 29.33 volts at the moment and obviously we're still back to these batteries looking forward to actually putting out the AGM Victron batteries in it so now I've got to fit a, an outdoor socket around here somewhere just so we can do our first like inverter load test. Get my screws. So we now got this light is now running through the inverter. So let's go to the multiplus. So inverting. Let's see what sort of wattage is required. So I think it's saying that we're pulling 22 watts. Now then, the best AC load we can actually put on it is the kettle. Let's go and try that. So yeah, officially made a brew. I've always wondered why people film themselves making a brew, but for this for this one, it's been like two days in the making, so I think we're gonna have our dinner. Paints are set up outside, so I'm gonna run the Alexa. I don't know, I'll watch something on YouTube. Here is YouTube. Oh my god, look. What should we watch? So we've got to sign into YouTube. No. No thanks. I don't know how to do it. Oh look! <laughs> that was not. I might as well watch those. So, there's you watching us, watching us. Come on, us. Miss. 
Where are we going? Sharon's. So, after letting the batteries charge for a little while, this one has been, as you can hear it, fizzing. So we put the meter across it. This one was charging at about 15 volts. The other one was at like a nice 13 something, 13 seconds or something. So I've now swapped two batteries over. This battery was good, it was charging, charging nice. This one unknown, so we've got to give it a test. <laughs> Stay with that. <laughs> wow. It's like a piston out of a blood two stroke. Wow. So the actual cap. You probably won't be able to see that. So maybe we need to use our machined one. Yeah, with batteries that boil like that, I think I think they're basically producing quite a bit of hydrogen. So the last thing you want in your engine room is hydrogen. And it'd be great if we had an open in the 10 mil spanner, but next time we come, we bring in a decent socket set. Go start charging this, charging these now. So I'm charging at 34 amps. We'll give it, we'll give it half an hour. We'll monitor both batteries. Anyway, we know this one's up there. Okay, so we now need to start taking, connecting the boat's DC system to this DC system. At the moment, they're both, they're both two completely different systems. So, give me a quick, a quick goosey. What's going on? So, here's our, here's our main supply cables to the, the consumer unit upstairs. I'm not a clue what these are. In fact, they've never done anything like that. But we need to idea what that one of them are. So yeah, we're going to try and get these over there, go through the shunt, so we can monitor incomings and outgoings and mainly outgoings. Not my bank. So yeah, okay. So yeah, these these wires here go up there, up there, up there, around there, all the way down there into here. But what I'm going to do is cut the ends off them. Make sure they look in reasonable condition. If not, I'm pretty sure they are because it's been run, they've been running quite well. But if not, I think I've got some more cable. But that'll mean changing it in the consumer unit. Funny, like I'm filming this so people can watch our journey. Yeah. I'll normally just be like working on my own, swearing and shouting. No one would ever appreciate anything because all people care about is that it actually works. Something works in the end. They don't. They don't really understand the journey. other people to do this sort of stuff which I think is crazy but on the other hand we pay accountants and stuff because we don't understand the monies and I've got it in a knot I went on the wrong side of that one there Ha! 
found them. You know, you lose something and you see them and you go, ah, oh, yeah, I remember putting it there now. But we are getting ourselves into another bit of a knot here. Okay, so we've now got our DC cables down here. We need to connect one to the 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 isolator, and one to the outward side of the shunt, so we can actually monitor ingoings and outgoings. As we said earlier, it would be outgoings. So this is the original DC supply. It's in like pretty good condition. Not on you, but it's pretty good. So we're now connected to the DC system on the boat, which is good. So we've now got, can you see my finger? Yes, this light here is the, is the DC lighting in the engine room. I've never seen them so bright before. Fantastic. So we've been charging for a while now. So I'm gonna to, going to measure the midpoints of the two batteries. For this battery we've got 14.3 volts, fantastic. This one we've got 13.4, which earlier on this was flat, 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 but this one's been pre-charged. So providing there's not an over voltage, I'm happy. So I think we might have found two good batteries. So we'll, we'll monitor them throughout the day. And we are drawing off them as well, so. By the moment we're charging it at 37 amps, which you can um, potentially increase that. Let's run the Jenny at 10 amps. Do the Jenny pick up. We're now charging at 41 amps DC. There's no funny fizzing noises like on that other battery, so I need to ID that battery and say it's um, if that remind me, I'm gonna ID it with red tape around the handle. So we now need to find out what the two wires were on them batteries. Try and find out what doesn't work. So the, the two really rubbish looking wires. So we'll try and ID them. So the the wire that was connected to these batteries that we were unsure of, which was a real poor connection, which it was basically <clears throat> Yeah, it was going through that. Can't actually find where the really bad bit was, I think it's just completely vanished. But anyway, so this wire went from over there, went into this high quality junction box. Through these fuses, I actually lied a few a few episodes ago because I said there was no fuses on it, but we've got these fuses there. They're basically for our bilge pumps and whatever all that jargon was. And this is our bilge wire, our bilge junction box, what do you call it? So we're going to leave that for now. Leave it in situ for now. So I'm guessing these wires here, these go up to the bilge control panel. These are our outputs to our bilge pumps. So, we're going to leave all that as is for now, because it actually works. But we're going to what we're going to do. We're going to remove this here, this junction here, and we're going to put another fuse box in. And then that will supply this. So a quick wrap up of today's antics. Um, made a mess. So. Made another mess. So as you can probably tell, our AC Lighting is running, 
Our DC lighting is running again with some some gusto. And there's no generator on. Yay! AC lights. And what we've even got. I don't like this switch, but it'll be upgraded soon. We've even got DC lights which are actually working. They draw a lot of current though. So we removed the panel which was there. We've figured out some wiring here, which this is all the bilge wiring. So I've now taken a supply from the consumer unit and supplying this, but there's still a few sketchy wires in there. So hence I'm gonna put another distribution box, gonna go for all the wires, gonna replace the bilge wires because they are impotent. So we fitted a socket, an outdoor-ish kind of socket in case we have a splash. As we said earlier, the Orion DC is a DC charger. As you can tell at the moment, because the generator is off, all we're doing is inverting. So this is our sole battery at the moment. We've got to get a proper AGM leisure battery for the security systems. That's charged from the Orion. These two batteries are proven to be actually quite good. After going through a couple of batteries, measuring them while they're charging, I mean, the last replacement was this one, which is actually marginally better than this one. So that's interesting. So we've now got um, two. Whatever, whatever, can actually see this. Right, I'm just, just trying to turn the light off. Can see that any better? Looks a bit. Honestly, real life is quite good. So what we're we looking at, I have to look through the screen. So go to our solar. So at the moment, it's not very sunny outside and the batteries are up there. So we're only charging at 55 watts and we've got two 175 watt panels mounted in series. So what else we're looking at? Our battery monitor. What's this telling us? So at the moment we're consuming 9.9 .9 amps of electricity, 10 amps, it's varying, I'm always varying. So that's being drawn through the inverter and also the DC light and that will just turn everything on. But yeah, it's all good, really, really, really impressed. Big cock up with the cables yesterday, hence why I'm here today. So my advice, new cables. So next time we come, we're going to sort out all this jumble. So we're going to get some nice wire management and sort it all out. Doesn't look very safe, but it's not too bad at the moment. It's all fused properly and stuff like that. And all the non-essential systems when we leave will be turned off for now. Happy days. So thank you for watching. Hope you join us next time. Come and drink.